In this lesson, we're going to talk about rational exponents, and we're going to talk about um, the correlation between an exponent and a root. Um, so all this stuff we've been learning about roots is really important, um, and we're going to take and do like the opposite, which is exponents. So uh, for our objective, we're going to be answering the question, how are the behavior of radical and exponential expressions the same? So we're going to simplify expressions with rational exponents and understand be able to convert between radical notation and exponential notation. Now some of you have been asking me questions and you kind of already have an idea of um, what an exponent and a radical do. Um, so that's great. If not, we're going to um, build on that knowledge and we're going to help you understand as well. So what is the simplified form of each expression? 216 to the 1 3rd power. Now, um, we want to know if there's a number that we could multiply three times to make 216. So the one-third power is the same as the third root. So this is these mean the same thing. They're interchangeable terms. Um, so 6 cubed is 216. So the cubed root of 6 cubed is 6. So this one, 7 to the 1 half times 7 to the 1 half. Well, if we rewrote 1 half as a root, what would it be? It would be a square root. So the square root of 7 times the square root of 7, and the square root of 7, or um, 7 times 7 is 49. So it's 7 squared. The square root of 7 squared is 7. This one. 5 to the 1 fourth times 125 to the 1 fourth. So we're going to have the fourth root of 5 times the fourth root of 125. I'm going to multiply those two together. And you get 625. Well, did you know that 125 is 5 cubed? Go figure. So that's 5 to the fourth. The fourth root of 5 to the fourth is 5. So can you see the correlation between a power and a root? So what if I gave you something is the third root? How could you rewrite that as a power, as one-third? Okay, so why don't you go ahead and do these really quick, see what you can simplify and combine and rewrite as roots instead of as powers. So I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of 64, and the square root of 64 is 8. Uh, this is the square root of 11 times the square root of 11, which is the square root of 121, or 11 squared, which is 11. And this one is the square root of 3 times the square root of 12. 12 times 3 is 36. The square root of 36 is 6. So these are pretty simple, um, fairly easy to do. Shouldn't be having any problems with those. All right, I want you to write these in radical form. So far we've just done um, where we have like one-third, one-seventh. But this time we're going to do three-sevenths. So can you guess what's going to happen? Well, the seven is going to be our root. What are we going to do with the three? The three we're actually going to leave as the power. So it's the seventh root of x cubed. Can we simplify that? No, so we're just going to leave it like that. You can write it as either one. I mean the same thing. What about y to the negative 3.5? Now this one's interesting because um, we have two things going on here. We have a negative and we have a decimal. Now in order to write these properly, we have to convert the decimal into a fraction. So 3.5 is the same as what? 3 and 1 half. Three and one half, and how do we rewrite that so it's an improper fraction like this three over seven? Well, two times three is six, plus one is seven. So it's seven halves. So our root is going to be two, but our power is going to be seven. And it's going to be negative, so to make it positive, we have to put it in the denominator. Okay, now what do we know about things in the denominator? Well, we don't really like to have um, 
roots. So square root of y to the seventh power. We can simplify that by writing y to the sixth times y. And the square root of y to the sixth is y cubed square root y. Or we can rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom by square root of y. So we have another y term. That would be your best answer. That would be the answer that I would be looking for, is square root of y over y to the fourth. What about this one? w to the negative 5 eighths power. Okay, we're going to follow the same rules. Um, here we go. So w to the negative 5 eighths power. Well, it's already a fraction, so that's good. But it's negative, so to make it positive, we put in our denominator. Now we rewrite it as a root. So I have 1 over the eighth root of w to the fifth. Now, I can't reduce this yet, so I'm going to change the form. Um, in order to get rid of something to the eighth root, we have to have it to the eighth power. So I'm going to multiply by how many in order to make this 5 become an 8? 3. So that makes eight, the eighth root of w to the eighth, which is just w. But on the top, I have the eighth root of w cubed over w. Uh, what about this one? What's point two the same as? Well, which place is this in? This is in the tenths place. So what that means is point two is equal to two tenths or one fifth. So our power is w to the one fifth power. So that just means the fifth root of w which we can't reduce it, we can't simplify it, we can't rationalize it. So that's all it is, right there, fifth root of w. All right, we're just going to keep working with some more. Um, what are the following expressions in exponential form? So this is in radical form. To write in exponential form, we just we need, need to change it and write it as a fraction. So this one. Um, the root is always understood to be a square root, so you have a to the 5 halves power. Remember, your root goes in your denominator, your exponent stays as your numerator. What about the fifth root of b cubed? Well, that would be b to the 3 over 5. Or this one, the fourth root of x cubed. That would be x to the three-fourths. And the fifth root of y to the fourth, that would be y to the four-fifths power. So hopefully you see the pattern, you understand, and recognize the correlation between powers and roots. All right, planetary motion. Kepler's third law of orbital motion shows how you can approximate the period p in Earth years it takes a planet to complete one orbit of the sun. Use the function p equals d to the 3 halves power, where d is the distance from the planet to the sun in astronomical units. Um, and just so you're aware, an AU is about 93 million miles, or the distance from the Earth to the sun. How many Earth years does it take Mars to orbit the sun if it is 1.52 AUs from the sun? Okay, so each revolution around the Earth, uh, or Earth around the sun, is one year for us. Is Mars closer or further to the sun? Mars is actually further away, so hopefully you know your Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. So how long is it going to take for Mars to orbit the sun if it's further away from the sun? So we're going to use this um, function, and we're going to plug in that 1.52 AUs raised to the 3 halves power. So what that means is um, you can put it in your calculator just like that, or you could take the square root of 1.52 and then raise that to the third power, or you could do 1.52 raised to the third power, take the square root of that. Whichever way you want to do, all are good. But 1.87, it takes almost two years, two Earth years, 
for Mars to orbit the sun. Isn't that crazy? And it's just like the next planet over, which, I mean, it sounds like our next door neighbor, but, you know, it's still a long way away. A Venusian year, you know, so that's on Venus, is 0.72 AU, and a Jovian year, that's on Jupiter, is 5.46 AUs from the sun. So, there you go. Isn't that interesting? So, um, either pick Venus or Jupiter and see how many Earth years it takes for them to orbit. I'm not sure if these are quite right because I forgot my um, fancy calculator at home. I'm using the one on my phone and it's not as easy to use. But I got um, Venus takes 0.61 or about two-thirds of a year, an Earth year to orbit the sun. And Jupiter is 12.76. That's 12 and three quarters years for Jupiter to orbit around the sun. Like, in our term, years. Like, so in your lifespan, Jupiter has only circled the sun one and a half times. That's crazy to me. Anyway, hopefully it's crazy to you too. Or maybe I'm just old and I really like math. Either way, you know, it's cool. All right, properties of exponents. When we have exponents with the same base being multiplied together, we just add the exponents. If we have an exponent raised to an exponent, we multiply them together. If we have um, two different values being raised to an exponent, we raise both of those values to an exponent. If we have a negative exponent, we put in the denominator, or if it's in the denominator, we put it in the numerator. Also, if we're dividing exponents, we take in, we're dividing um, same base, different exponents, we subtract. And then if we're dividing and raising to the same exponent, we divide both the numerator and the denominator. Hopefully you've seen all of these properties before. This shouldn't be anything new. I just wanted to make sure that you're aware and you remember these things. All right, so we're going to be combining expressions into their simplest form. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write each one of these um, as an exponent because they're going to be a lot easier to work with. So I'm going to have in the numerator x to the 3 fourths and in the denominator x to the 2 eighths power. So it's going to look like this. Okay, now I want to reduce that denominator because 2 divided by 8 is 1 fourth. Well, apparently I subtracted first. Okay, so if we have x is the same base and we have exponents, we're dividing, we subtract those exponents. 2 eighths will become 1 fourth, so we have 3 fourths minus 1 fourth. That's 2 fourths or 1 half. So x to the 1 half or square root of x. Isn't that much nicer looking? Yes, yes it is. All right, what about this one? What's the product of the square root of 3 times the fourth root of 3? Okay, before we said we can't combine um, different indexes, but we actually can. I just didn't want you to get, like, too, like, oh, what is this? Okay, so we're going to write each one of these as a power, 3 to the 1 half times 3 to the 1 fourth. So um, we have the same base, so they have different exponents, and we're going to add those two exponents, 1 half plus 1 fourth. That is 3 fourths, so we have the fourth root of 3 cubed, which is 27. So fourth root of 27, that's how we got that. All right, so let's write each one in the simplest form. 16 to the negative 2.5. So the first thing we wanna do is change that negative 2.5 into a fraction. So that's two and a half. Um, so that means it's negative five halves. To make it positive, we put it in the denominator. So we have, um, 2 to the 4th to the negative 5 halves, so we put it in the denominator. So that's 1 over 16 to the 5 halves. And then um, we can reduce that even further um, and take, say it's the square root of 16 to the 5th power. Well, we know the square root of 16 is 4, so 1 over 4 to the 5th power and 4 to the 5th power is 1,024. So in my mind, I'm doing the column on the right-hand side. 
the stuff on the left hand side is just as good. If you want to leave it as a negative uh, and then work out the exponents first, you can do that too. Um, if you want to rewrite things as all powers, you can do that. We have a lot of options when it comes to these kind. All right, and there are some more to do. Um, these are basically all the same thing. I don't want to get you too bogged down. There's a lot going on here. Um, so go ahead and look through these and figure out what's going on. Under I mean, not figure out. Understand what's going on. Ask me questions. I want to help you. Um, I hope you have a good night. And we're going to have a quiz on Monday before Thanksgiving break. So make sure you're keeping up with your homework. Okay, bye.